for those of you okay let me count it in three two one welcome back to the playhouse yani if you're catching us on this episode my advice is go back to the first episode and just watch it from there i'm with none other than david courier anyway courier let's continue with this amazing story we left it out at mofrika tick power hair yani the first mobile i mean the first online site that you can buy money using mobile money that year, the first world congrats mm. for that. <laughs> it was a big deal, Bana. It, it was a huge, huge deal. It not even was. It is a big no deal. No one, no websites it, at all you could history. use M-Pesa. In fact, one thing, as I'm hearing your story, you I should start... be in the M-Pesa story, by the way. They write their story. <laughs> so I'm playing it Bob yeah. Colimo and, and crew. <laughs> that was Michael Joseph, not even. Yeah. And Michael, yeah. So, let, so let, now let's enter this other phase of your life, huh? where now you are. You've you've played around with this word with with this with this industry in terms of artist management. When did you start? Who was the first artist that you managed? Um, and so how did you get into it? <clears throat> the first artist I managed was Giuliani. Oh, was the first artist I managed. There were conversations that we had with a couple of other guys, and I remember doing strategy meetings with uh, Cheesy at my office on Valley Road. I don't know if, I don't know if he remembers this. Hmm. I remember going for Kanji's uh, strategy meetings. Um, in South B, South C, South C, I think, mm-hmm. uh, where Kijiji was back yeah. then. And what um, happens in a strategy meeting? Strategy meeting is is where where we figure out we figure out. So strategy meeting, we think about you as a brand, right? So you are Aster, uh-huh. you are a brand, and I always the I say you are a brand of toothpaste, uh-huh. and we introduce you to the market or want to position you in a particular way. And the question is to ask ourselves: Let's understand this brand. Mm-hmm. the 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 uh, essence of this brand but let's also understand the market and where you want to position this brand I love it. so i've always had this narrative and even today when i meet with artists i have this narrative where i say uh, when we come and people say oh, help me with my career i say okay who are you if in fact this is the narrative i have i have a narrative where i say if we went to a music store and cds were arranged and they were arranged like in peers mm. So you are you are a startup artist. All the startups are on this shelf. Mm. You are like a mid tier guy. You are trying to break through. You are all here. There is a top tier guys. You are all here. I ask guys, which shelf are you on? First question. Second question I always ask artists is, who's next to you? <laughs> who's on your left and who's on your right? Just get a sense of whether you understand your brand, your brand, and that's kind of how we begin the conversation mm-hmm. and figure out okay, which shelf <coughs> do you want to be on? Who is there? Who's producing their music? Who's writing their music? those types of conversations so those are some of the things that we do with not everything but just part of the strategy conversation eh? okay so so this is what you helped cheesy do with like the sulu album i don't know if it was sulu but i know we did have some strategy i can't yeah. remember what it was yeah. but we had some strategy conversations kanji when he was doing stories yes i remember uh, that had his fantastic album launch at uh, where was that album launch at carnival carnival yeah, carnival yeah. grounds uh, first time we saw a gospel artist or any artist do billboards for for an album launch yeah it was kanji um and then SK Blue SK Blue was the first serious conversation I had SK Blue was moving from his kind of like a uh-huh. Kenyan pop sound eh, to a much more afro afrofusion centric <laughs> fusion uh, and he was doing this thing from from prophecy to kitenge kitenge and he had asked me he had had many conversations about you know me coming on board and managing him I don't know why it eventually didn't didn't work. I don't remember what the story was. But the first one, the first proper deal I had was with Giuliani. Okay. Let's tell us about the Giuliani story. So, so Giuliani was a part of hip hop. And and that was you guys, you and Riga and you know those guys. Bupe and who was D and Shiro. Mayonde Michel, Mayonde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh yeah, Mayonde Michel uh, and um, you guys had a show. I don't know if it was your show or you were taking part in a show at Kenya National Theater. Mm-hmm. And Giuliani decided he didn't want to come for that show, and he came to my office. And I remember, we he I sat and he actually sat on the floor. I never forget, right next to me. And we had a I don't know why he was sitting on the floor. I can't remember. We had a long conversation about him and whatnot. And I convinced him eventually. He, he went for the gig eventually. That was Riga's album launch. Oh yes, that was that's who he <laughs> yes. was. Absolutely, the yeah, awakening. For the awakening. Yeah. And uh, he, b- he finally came. And he Next, finally yes. came. Riga, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but but he came at the end completely. But he threw down. Yeah, I remember that. But I remember um, thereafter. Then we just began conversations. What happened with him is that 
then he got into conversations with Emmanuel Jal. Uh, and Emmanuel Jal at the time was, I remember Emmanuel Jal because when I was, I was, I did radio very briefly. I, I don't talk about this at family, family radio, family mm -hmm. FM. Yeah. Very briefly. Morning show. In and out. Lunch show, evening. Uh, I did a lunch show. Uh -huh. And I remember meeting Jal at about that season. And uh, I just, I, I didn't know that he'd become <laughs> Emmanuel Jal. <laughs> But Emmanuel Jal goes to the UK, he starts up a record label, Gatwich Records, and he wants to sign Giuliani. And Giuliani just, I think he, he didn't have the, um, he needs a little, a little bit of help with those types of conversations. Some of the more official conversations, contracts and whatnot. It's not because I, I had all the experience in the world, but I knew which doors to knock on. Mm -hmm. And what happened with Giuliani is we're able to look at the contract make amendments to the contract and whatnot. And then I, I became his manager. Giuliani, let me tell you, I have such admiration and such respect for Giuliani. Giuliani is a hard worker. That's the one thing I appreciated about this guy. This guy would come to my house uh, and he'd have a, like, a, like, a, like a song book and he's written like 30 songs. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing with 30 songs? You know what I mean? Like, and he'd say, you know, I'm going to write five more tonight and he'd go do it. And his work ethic for me, first, that's what sold me. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you, I've been asked by many artists. Last year, there's an artist who, who, who reached out to me and said, oh, I need an artist manager because, you know, I'm not very, I'm not a hustler. I'm not very disciplined. I was like, my guy, shred, shred, <laughs> shred. But Giuliani for me was very disciplined. He was, you know. Uh, so this is what we did with Giuliani. We did strategy for Giuliani. I think it probably was the two of us. Oh, I don't know if anybody else was involved. And this was the first time we had done this. Before Giuliani went to the record, to the, to the studio, we mapped out the entire record. We mapped it out in terms of, we said, here are the producers we want on the record. Our, our initial pick was Tim Rimbui. It's called Innovator. Mm. Innovator Music at the time. We went to see him, he was unavailable. He had a big project, I think, with Warner Brothers. Yes. At the time, and he, could, he couldn't work on it. We were, <laughs> were like, okay, no worries. We went back and we sat, and let me tell you, we wrote down, we want to work with Musioka as our, as our main producer. But we said, my guy, we need, we need some songs that just have a little bit of street cred. Eh? Uh, we want banging radio songs, but we want, so we're like, uh, we went to, um, not Mandugu Deeds, what are they called? The, the girl, ba, 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 Banjo. Yes, 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 yes. They're called again. Ah, They'll kill me if I, if they, yeah, I forgot <laughs> I about the, uh, But, but we, we went to them. We went to uh, Mandugu Deeds. Uh -huh. We went to Gitz. Uh, and, and Gitz just was like fire. Yeah. Um, I don't remember who else we went to. Huh? But we, we, and I'm, when I say we went to, I'm saying on paper. We were like, here are the guys we want to work with. We'll do one song with Gitz, it'll be a single. We'll do three songs with this guy. They may not be singles, they'll be album songs. We'll do these songs with Musioka. Two of them will be radio singles. We mapped out the whole thing. We also mapped out the content of the record mm -hmm. and said, here are the themes that we want to talk about. And you know, that's an interesting process for creatives because creatives don't work like that. Mm. You kind of just create and see where it goes. Yeah. And for me, this taught me something about uh, uh, it's like a planned creativity. Yeah? There's a thing where you're creative, yes, but you have to think through your creative before mm. you start. Otherwise, if you're creative with no like yeah, you'll go anywhere. Yeah. And we mapped out this entire thing. We mapped out who's going to do uh, photography for us. We chose Mutua Madeka mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, I connected him with Mutua, the fantastic shoot. Uh, we said, hey, the guys are going to do our music videos for us. I can't even remember who did them now. Edu G did. Edu G did, yeah, Edu G did, did, I think he did biceps or, yeah. or, or one of those songs. Yeah, he did biceps. And before we did anything, we leave. And then we also did collabs. We asked ourselves, and I always, this is how I work with artists. I say, okay, you've done your, your songs and whatnot with hip hop. Um, how do we open you up to new markets? Mm. At the time, you know who was big? <coughs> Eric Wainaino. Yes. It was huge. I, I told him, I know Eric, I'll call Eric and I'll get him a lot of your songs. And we did. Is that how Julian did it? In the Absolutely. I'm the one who called Eric. What? He didn't know Giuliani, but I called him. I said, my guy, there's this cat. He's doing a record. We are on this UK-based label. I, I, I was at the center. I called him. And I thought it'd be a long conversation. Come, let me listen to his. 
It was like, Korea, it's you. Done. Let's do it. And I, I remember calling Julian and saying, okay, Eric is on. He was like, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Oinaina. Um, and then we got, uh, I told him, my guy, you have to do Kofulani. You have to. That's, yes. that's part of that street cred from Dandora. And yes. Your, and we we wow, called wow. we called Zaka. Something more. Not Zaka. We called no something more was. Uh, oh yes, it was something it's more. Something more. Which the, the, the chorus just had Brian King. Absolutely. Yeah. Brian King. I said, listen, we need a good pop voice. Uh -huh. uh, so we got Brian King. Actually, we had someone else in mind initially, but we got Brian King for that, and he nailed it. Something more. 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 Something Shua kifahari, saki shua kifahari, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, that thing was it was it was magic that album because we we laid it out on paper. We had the whole thing before us, and then we went and executed. And exactly, I mean, there was room for creativity, yeah? mm. and he still created a couple of things with Gates and with Musioka that we had not planned for. Eh? Mm. Uh, like something more was one of the one, one of the, the at least the direction of the song. Mm. The only thing we didn't do was uh, like a love song or a, it was the only thing. And I remember telling Tim Rimbu when we met him. Now that's the only thing, but but we worked on this thing, and this guy was diligent. He was committed to this thing, and we put out just this amazing record. Mm. You know, when I think about, in my opinion, when I think about amazing gospel music records in this country, I mean, we mentioned LYF, LYF back in the day, Zaidi Mziki, mm -hmm. that I thought was just was absolutely yeah. brilliant. There was a rapper who had an album called The Light. You may not know him. <laughs> You, but I, I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant record. Um, Avuna Worship Project. There are a couple of yes, that, I milestone. Did, that I remember for me, milestone type records. Uh, System Ya Kapungala, that uh, one of it. those records. Yeah. Uh, but Giuliani's record. Intermentality. Intermentality. That, that was for me uh, near the top of the pile for sure. And, and we put this thing out and it just blew up, man. It really just blew up. I remember guys coming to me, I remember one record executive locally saying, why would you sign the record label? Why would you, it's such a bad deal. And I was like, my guy, where we are at, we, we don't have the resources to pull off mm -hmm. four music videos. Mm -hmm. We don't have the resources to pay Musioka yep. for his studio time. We don't have the resources to go to RK, whoever it is that we went to. Kanji mixed the record. Yep. We got Kanji to mix the record. Um, and we, I don't know where we printed it, I think in the UK. Yeah, it was, and, and one mind blowing thing, it's so funny. Now, you see, when you, because I've interviewed Giuliani about this, and what he said, he said, Kuria asked me, Who, who do you want to be? And he said, Juakali. Mm. Juakali, that term was huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's his own so he was like, I can't, I, maybe I may not be Juakali, but that's who I want to be next to. Yeah. Number one or number two? That was that thing I was telling you for the, where the is CDs. your record? Where exactly. do you want to be? And that's, what, that's why he said my process was, who's on the shelf above you? Who are they working with? Who are they collaborating with? What do their videos look like? Yeah. That's what we are looking for. And that's how we created the structure for Mutra Mentality. So, okay, fine. It goes, you guys release this amazing thing. That uh, partnership ends. Uh, at least maybe it was a record deal. I mean, it was a one record deal or whatever it was. Where do you go next in terms of this management? 
even if it's in the future like oh man I, because you were successful with Giuliani I mean you had a track record so so here's my other narrative because <laughs> I feel like my life has had two narratives yeah. 